Now, the former Defence Secretary Ben Wallace has said that Iran must be hit back twice as hard in response uh, to their missile attack on Israel. Now, both Britain and the US have urged Benjamin Netanyahu to show restraint in his response uh, to that Iran attack. Joining me now to discuss this is Conservative MP and former Army officer James Sunderland. Good morning to you, James. Good morning, Julia. How are you? Very well indeed. Thank you very much. You're just a bit worried about World War III, but I'm wondering whether a strong response from Israel to Iran, which is clearly a threat to peace in the Middle East, um, uh, in terms of their proxy terror organisations around the whole of the Middle East, indeed around Europe as well, um, whether that is how we best avoid World War III or whether no response or a very restrained response is how we best avoid World War III. What do you think? Well, since the events of 7th of October last year, um, we are on the brink now of conflict in the Middle East. I believe that politicians have a responsibility to dial down the rhetoric and to make sure that we de-escalate wherever possible. Um, Israel has every right to defend itself, but it's a question of timing, whether it chooses to do it now or later, or not at all. Um, Israel, in my view right now, has enough on its plate dealing with uh, Gaza and Hamas. Um, and I think that uh, any escalation right now would not be the right thing to do. Well, hold on a minute. They've got off on their plate dealing with Hamas, you know, and indeed Hezbollah, filing rockets in from Lebanon, all of whom are funded... Oh, let me check my notes. Oh, Iran. Um, I mean, this is the reason why, you know, Iran were ret was retaliating for an attack on, on a, a compound in D Damascus uh, where you know, Revolutionary Guard generals and military chiefs were, were, were killed. But that was because they have been targeting Israel through their proxies. I mean, you know, you know that, I know that, everyone knows that. So the idea that, the idea that Israel doesn't respond to a huge escalation by Iran, it is a simple matter of luck. And thanks to the aid of, you know, the Iron Dome, US, UK, uh, French, and indeed Jordanian, uh, you know, military jets shooting down some of these missiles, it's a miracle that we didn't see mass civilian casualties in Israel as a result of this attack. Would anyone be asking Israel to sort of, you know, cooler heads, cut, tone down the rhetoric, if that were the case? Of course they wouldn't. Israel's got every right to defend itself. We saw that uh, with Hamas. Um, if you look at what the Iranians are doing in the Middle East right now, deliberate destabilisation, have a look at the Houthi, have a look at Hezbollah, have a look at Hamas. There is no question at all that the Iranians are deliberately destabilising the region uh, and trying to preempt conflict. But whether or not Israel retaliates, whether or not Israel attacks Iran is absolutely a matter for Israel. And I believe that the US government and the British government are quite right in saying publicly that they would not join that. We need to de-escalate tension right now. We need to contain the crisis, not exacerbate it. Nobody wants World War III. No, no, well, indeed. Well, I mean, I don't know, apart from the Iranians, you seem to be quite keen on it. was just... Um, can I ask you about also Rishi Sunak rejecting calls coming from Labour and senior Conservatives as well uh, to uh, prescribe Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps? Uh, the concerns, of course, that, you know, th they are the ones propagating a lot of this, these terror cells and funding them. But the answer from the government has been, look, basically, you know, that is, you know, that is... Is he, that is Tehran's, you know, diplomatic core as well. We need to maintain relations with uh, Iran so that we can actually, you know, have those back channels and the like and maintain an embassy in Tehran as well. Who do you agree with? Should we prescribe this organisation, which is clearly funding terror, or should we not? Well, responsible Western governments need to keep their powder dry, in my view. And uh, if you look yesterday in the chamber at uh, the Prime Minister's statement, it's quite clear to me that there are an increasing number of people now demanding that the British government does prescribe the IGC. And, of course, many Labour politicians and that as well. Um, that is definitely an option that sits with the Prime Minister and the British government. But at this point in time, noting that we do need to maintain diplomatic relations with Tehran, um, you know, they, they are clearly the pariah of the Middle East at the moment. But, uh, but, but if we cut off ties with them by prescribing the IGC, that will only serve to undermine future attempts at negotiation and peace. OK, can I uh, bring us back to domestic politics? Uh, MPs voted to defeat Lords Amendments on the Rwanda Bill last night. It's going to go back to the Lords, then come back to the Commons. Ping pong will be over. And it's said, you know, by Friday, pretty confident the government is now that we're going to see that Rwanda, well, safety of Rwanda Bill become law. Prime Minister said he wanted to get flights off the ground by end of spring. You know, we're, we're approaching that pretty soon. We're going to have legal challenges. You know that, I know that. Do you think that we are going to see any of those flights to Rwanda taking off with any actual channel migrants on board? 
Well, let's be clear, the Rwanda bill will become law. Um, the government has the numbers to ensure that it does become law. Uh, we are resisting further attempts by the Lords to amend the bill any further. This thing will go through and it must go through. And in terms of the flights themselves, well, quite clearly, once the statute's in place, once the law is in place, we can then work on operationalising the plan to get the flights off, which must happen. And again, this is not just about the Rwanda plan per se. That's just part of a much wider lexicon of measures that the British government's taking. This is about effective deterrence so that further um, asylum seekers, refugees, and mainly economic migrants uh, don't seek that perilous journey across the channel. We've got to stop illegal migration, and that's what the British government intends to do. Um, can I also ask you about the vote tonight in the House of Commons? Uh, there's a free vote, so it's an unwhipped vote on the, the uh, bringing in a smoking ban for anyone who's sort of 15 now, never being able to legally buy uh, cigarettes, following on from a, a law in New Zealand, although that law has already been dropped by the incoming uh, New Zealand government. Um, how are you going to vote tonight? Julia, another great question. Um, it's not I a think great question. It's, it's a perfectly it normal a journalist question. question. Stop delaying. How are you voting tonight? OK, I'm a low-tax, low-state, low-regulation Conservative. Regulation sits uneasily with me. We over-regulate with everything we do. People want government out of their lives, not in their lives. I'm very keen to support the Prime Minister, but I may exercise my right to abstain. Abst Wait a minute. So you think this is a terrible law, but you're not going to vote against it? It's not whipped. It's a free conscience vote, like, you know, votes on moral issues, abortion, assisted dying and the like. You can... You, why don't you just vote against? Julia, you're going to get me all sorts of trouble here. I think no, the bottom line is... It's a free vote. You're not going to be breaking MPs, the whip. Um, MPs vote mainly because they have to and because they want to. Where there is a free vote, we've got the ability to support the, the legislation, to vote against it or to abstain. Yeah. Uh, as I said earlier, I am a free, um, a free market, low tax, low regulation conservative. Yeah. I probably will support the Prime Minister, but the bottom line is that I'm not in favour of further regulation. We so need to that, get government out So you're out so, you're so in favour of individual freedom and so in favour of getting government out of people's lives on an opportunity to vote down a measure that would do that and impinge on people's freedom and their personal lives, you're just going to not vote and sit on the fence. I mean, sorry, have you changed into Keir Starmer since the start of this interview? No, not at all. I mean, I've not got to vote against it because I think ultimately we've got to stop smoking. Smoking is bad well, well, for all sorts of reasons. Smoking's going down already. In it, yes. but, smoking, but, but smoking. When you token, were young and when I was young, far more people smoke. Far more people now have given up or they've taken up vaping, which is not good, but it's darn sight safer than smoking. Why do we need to introduce this ban? And I say this, by the way, well, as an avid anti-smoker. I hate being around people smoking. Well, I think that people do have freedoms, and I think that uh, we don't want people to be told what to do every day of their lives. You're going so to allow I'm that. very sympathetic to this measure. I'm very sympathetic for the need to stop smoking. But, but the point is, it's about how you enforce it. It's about how you regulate it. Your previous caller talked about ID cards. How do shopkeepers enforce the law? So, in my view, I'm very supportive of the Prime Minister. He's absolutely moving in the right direction. But I think there's more detail to come here. And for that reason, I will either support the measure or abstain against it. Oh, now we're going to possibly support... I mean, James, I mean, give... I was so hopeful from the start of your answer on that, that first time round, but it's gone... Um, we talk about how these sort of measures become slippery slopes. That answer was a slippery slope. But I, I, I would either support it I because of the need to support the Prime Minister about sitting on the I fence and not standing up to your principles. <laughs> James, thank you for joining Take care. us. Take care. I will do. I don't think he did think it was a great question. Still <laughs> with me, it's Tom.